Welcome back to the Beyond the Dojo podcast. I'm Lauren. I'm Jeremiah. And I think this is episode 11. Yeah, right? 11? Sure. Yeah. And today is going to be the second Q&A we've done so far. Um, we had a question from, we're currently uploading all of our podcasts to YouTube at this point. So we had a question off of our YouTube channel. Um, we're going to be covering that today. So it might be short and to, to the point. Yeah, I think so. Okay, so the the comment was, um, oh, I love the podcast, guys. Keep it going. It's very much needed in the karate community. Thanks, bro. Uh, okay, so my question is, how do you deal with these people who say Shotokan is, quote, watered down karate? Most of these guys are, shor- are Shorinru practitioners, and it just aggravates me so much to see and hear this on social media. Just this week, a, quote, well-known karate Facebook blog page posted a video of a JKA instructor and continued to bash the instructor's demonstration of a technique. As soon as it was posted, tons of people came to bash Shotokan itself as an art. And of course, the video was posted by a Shorinru black belt. So he's basically asking, um, how are we dealing, how do we deal with people who make those types of comments? He's obviously saying that Shorinru is the culprit, but I mean, that's... I think haters, people are going to hate no matter what. Haters going to hate, you know? And when it comes to realistic combatives combatives and stuff, I mean, reality is majority of your traditional arts are not going to be a direct translation. Okay. So that being said, one being more true than the other Mm -hmm. is really not that at all. It's an art Mm -hmm. and it's an expression. Um, But, you know, haters are going to hate. And my personal philosophy on on what's a good style or not, I negate that completely. Mm-hmm. It's not about style. When it comes to nowadays, it's truly about the artist. It's the martial artist that is good or bad. Yeah. The principles behind all the styles, I mean, if you really want to dive into it, they all have the same principles. They all have tried to do the same things. It's just a matter of what path you take and what you emphasize more. Yeah. So that being said, I mean, in reality, we're all karate. Yeah, when it comes to styles, I mean, the human body only works efficiently in so many ways. You can argue that if you want to, but that's why there's scientific research behind certain types of techniques. If it comes to strength training, sports movement, whatever, there's going to be a more optimal way to move. While that may vary a little bit person to person, in general, there's going to be basic principles of movement that are going to be true right. regardless of you know what your background is. So Absolutely. even though like... The way an art looks might be different. I think once you get to higher, I once heard an instructor say that once you get to higher levels of all different types of martial arts, they all start to like um, come together. To the, yeah, 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 they all exactly. meet together, and and there's not as much of a stylistic difference. You start to see, I guess, overlap there. Yeah, converge. That's the word I was looking for. Converge, they start yeah. to converge a little bit. Yeah. Um, so this guy was talking about um, issues like on Facebook, which obviously that's <laughs> social media. <whatever. laughs> social media is like is the, the the pit that you never crawl out of if you start arguing. Yeah. So um, how do you feel whenever you see things like that on social media? Honestly, you know, when it comes from showroom guys, you know, I'll give them this. And what I do is I give credit to where credit's needed or due. Uh-huh. So when I see a showroom guy, I'm going to talk to him about application. I'm going to look up YouTube videos of showroom teachers that are are damn good in application yeah and really good and i learn off of them because it applies it works yeah right but in the same sense i think a lot of these older maybe shorinru or even the okinawan styles i think they should at the same sense look at the credible aspects of our karate which is dynamic movement yeah. And they can learn a lot of how we do what you just spoke about, uh, biomechanics. They yeah. can learn a lot about that. And, you know. Yeah. And remember, we're looking at, at karate in general from it, the perspective of is this type of movement, this technique, this sequence, whatever, is it applicable in some way to real life? Are there principles there that we could apply to real life? And what Jeremiah is also getting at is like, it's not a style thing. It's how, it's how the person yeah. actually performs. So, um, you know, they're talking about a JKA instructor. Right. Whereas. Uh, let's give it to them though. Let's be real. Uh, JKA application, mm-hmm. not the greatest, not the most realistic, yeah. but it is the easiest to understand. Yeah. 
And they might be using it as a teaching tool. Yeah. Um, the kick punch application stuff. Yeah, it, it's... It's root. It's it's elementary. It's basic, mm-hmm. basic, basic application. Um, but they don't claim to be well. <sighs> you gotta understand that we're coming from the perspective, not like we know all things and we're like ego people, like oh they don't know anything. It's not that. No, not that we, at all. We have teachers who have studied this for many years, and they're like, look, you know, some of this stuff works and some of it doesn't. You right. have to look, take everything from every teacher with a grain of salt. So, right. you know, looking at the JK or even other. Uh, you know, well-known organizations. Sometimes, you know, they're working on teaching the masses. They're not really breaking things down to that perspective because it's just not what they're focusing on. They're focusing more on spreading the art or a certain stylistic um, thing, which is not our preference uh, very much at all. Um, But different Shotokan groups are going to look different from each other. So, you know, that's that's one th- argument against don't anybody touch from the art based on a group, right? Yeah, don't yeah, don't 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 give a label to an entire group based on um, an entire section of something based on just one small group of it, and that's on everything in life. So right. here's some. Um, All right. Well, let's go back to you. this. You know, I think every style has uh, great teachers in their own little aspects. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the JK instructors are great in body movement, Mm -hmm. uh, tournament style kata, and sparring. Mm -hmm. But if you would ask them, they'd probably tell you they spilled very little time on application. Yeah. It's purely body movement and, you know, performance, karate performance. Yeah. So, no, they're not good at it. Do they have to teach it? Yeah, because it's part of the art. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I think you would you'd get them to admit, hey, yeah, there's more better application out there. Yeah, and you had made a point about the difference between Shorinru and Shotokan earlier, right? Yeah, well, this. in my personal opinion, I feel like Shotokan is, well, obviously, I think it's the purest art. It's the most efficient, biomechanically, human performance, whatever, right? Um, if you look at that as the base, then you would say Shorinru would be more like Shotokan on steroids, where they they overemphasize hip rotation. They do too much, um, and it, it kind of, you know, you could look at Shorinru and say, yeah, they have great application, but their mechanics are not the the most efficient yeah and you can look at our karate and go yeah you got really efficient mechanics but as a whole you guys really don't know what you're doing yeah so it, it kind of is one of those things those one of those topics where i'm like it really doesn't apply to to many people mm-hmm. when you talk about style to style it's just you know that's great for for conversation and everything but in reality it has to be artist to artist nowadays you have to compare the artist yeah yeah, you got to be looking at an individual person's practice. Practice, yeah. Somebody else's because, right. you know, our Shotokan is not going to look the same as somebody else's. And and these guys bashing this particular instructor, obviously, we didn't see the video. We don't know who the JK instructor is. There's a good chance that Jeremiah and I maybe would agree with him. And maybe we don't like that JK instructor stuff. So, I mean, it, it doesn't really... I don't think it's it's really okay for people to go around bashing other styles. I, I right. think that that's not I'll, really a good practice to have. I'll but. say this, too. Um, there's not one absolute application to any karate move. Mm-hmm. Not, not a, there's not a single one application. There's multiple applications to majority of all your moves. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, but he's talking about a technique. He's not talking about application in the, in this video. He said that the JK instructor was demonstrating a technique. We don't actually know if he means like an application to a technique. I, I think I, I would assume it's the application. Mm-hmm. Um, if they're talking about biomechanical and, and biomechanics and, uh, body movement, dude, they're, they're out their mind. Mm -hmm. They're out their mind. If they think a JK instructor doesn't have that. I mean, they have great mechanics generally. Once again, I think that once again, I think that goes back to, you know, individual overall, overall, overall. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I would generally say that Shotokan JK Shotokan has a better understanding of, kinesiological principles yeah and applying them yeah so the question though is how do how do we deal with that oh how do we deal with it man honestly anybody talks about style versus style i will say it again i just kind of shrug them off and i turn the or try to point the conversation to artists against artists yeah that's simply how it is in reality bruce lee was one of the greatest martial artists we'll ever see Mm -hmm. he created this style Mm-hmm. And since he was the greatest martial arts we'll ever see, and he created that style, you would assume that that style would create 
amazing martial artist. Mm -hmm. So right. when's the last time you heard of a great Jeet Kune Do yeah. guy? Yeah. You don't. I mean, it's it's not the style. And even Bruce says it's not the style. It's what works. Yeah. What works for you. And that's kind of the approach we have with Shotokan. We got to the point where we're past the the style, and now we're like, okay, what works? Within the frame of what we understand karate to be, what works? Yeah. And that's kind of how I would try to direct the conversation when someone attacks my style as being not applicable or, or shallow or whatever they want to. I'll just explain to them that we're deeper in different parts, mm -hmm. and at least I have the humility to say, yeah, and some parts we really suck at. <laughs> yeah. And, and application, let's be real, JK, Shotokan, Karate – doesn't give the most realistic application. Does it work? Yes. Uh, would it work in realistic situations? No. Simple as that. Because. And so. We could talk about that with any style and a demonstration of application. Mm -hmm. Because. We're, about, we're talking about technique. I know. God dang it. I want to talk about application because I know that's. In my mind, one of the bigger arguments. Yeah, but this could be some guy demonstrating a side snap kick. Yeah, that's for true. For all we know. That's true. Well, if they don't understand body mechanics, then I feel bad for them. The JKA and Shaw. Uh, anybody who's going to criticize someone that has good mechanics. Yeah. I'm sorry. And we're not saying that they necessarily do. No, I'm because just saying. I didn't see the video. Right. We can't judge the video because we didn't watch it. I'm just saying. Yeah. My bad. I'm stuck on the application thing because that's a that's a big thing with the jet, the mainland styles compared to the Okinawan styles. That's exactly what they'll say every time. Oh, it's not real. It's, it doesn't have depth. You don't understand what yeah. you're doing. And that's crap, man. It's just a different emphasis to a different time. Yeah. But majority of your, your high ranked instructors in Shotokan, you ask them about application. They'll give you their own interpretations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's just a different approach. So with the question about technique, essentially it's like, okay, so if you're going to be dealing, it, it, first of all, I don't engage in those conversations because if someone usually comes in with their mindset, that's pretty much going to be it. Yeah, and rare, it. rarely are people going to be arguing on Facebook, actually trying to change their mind. Right. But if in the instance that you're among friends, if you if they were your friends and you are trying to just discuss an idea, um, the approach that I would take is, you know, watching the technique and Thinking critically. So, like, we get defensive over our own art, and we don't want people to bash it, and I don't really think that's appropriate for anybody of any art to start bashing somebody else unless they have specific reasons why. So, if they can justify mechanically why that technique that was demonstrated is no good, then you've learned something and you're able to Absolutely. maybe apply that. But if they can't justify that and they're just saying stuff because it makes them feel good, well, then don't even listen to them because they're full of crap anyway. Right. But you also, as a practitioner, should be able to defend why you demonstrate something a certain way. It's not just because your teacher told you to do so. Yeah. You know, you should be able to test that technique in different scenarios. And you should Jeremiah, be a critical thinker. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so so Jeremiah is talking about application a lot, but it's because the technique leads into the application. The mechanics of a technique should be based on the application for one, but then also the longevity of the technique and your body being able to perform that technique that way. Just because a technique is is applicable or because a technique is effective necessarily doesn't mean that it's efficient. So that doesn't mean that you're going to be able to perform that technique for many many years over and over again. I mean, granted, there's going to be some wear and tear anyway, but if you can minimize that as much as possible, you know, and there are issues with shoulders, elbows, whatever. If the path of the technique is going to be tearing on your body, then I would say that that technique is not sound. And how do you know whether or not it's sound? Well, you have a good teacher that points it out to you. You study, you look at some of the older texts, you, know you watch your body. some of the originals, you know your, well, you know your body, but sometimes even like basing things off the way that you feel, sometimes just because you feel like it feels strong, Steve Ubel says this, it, just because it, if it feels strong, it probably isn't. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, if, you're feeling, if you're feeling something in that tech, if you're feeling certain things in that technique, honestly, it doesn't always mean that it's there. Yeah. It doesn't always mean that it's a good technique. It's just, you know, sometimes you need this extra set of eyes looking on your technique or you need to be able to study to a certain point. And that's where a lot of the depth of study comes in. Yeah, uh, on that point, um, instructors. the way I like to say it is when you make an impact, if you have a reverb of the impact in your body. Let's say you hit the mic wire and your shoulder pops up. That's not an efficient technique. Mm -hmm. 
your shoulder is going to wear out. It can't handle all that impact. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to properly engage your lats, keep your shoulder down and punch correctly. Yeah. And if you're, you know, if we're just talking about punching. If you're punching and you feel it in your arm, like your arm feels really strong, then that means that you're probably tensing all of the wrong muscles and you're just tensing your arm. You're not actually transferring for force forward. Like whenever a person is performing an athletic technique, if they're transferring force because they're running or because they're, you know, uh, tackling somebody or they're throwing something, they don't really feel tension in their body. They feel the force being transferred. And that's kind of the idea is that you shouldn't really feel much of anything. Thing. Right. If you have extra tension, you're not actually going anywhere. Could you think? Could you imagine a Olympic sprinter being extremely right. tense? Yeah. Like they have a little bit of tension in their shoulders because they're having to move so fast, but overall their body's pretty supple. Yeah. And that's the idea with with karate too. So there's a lot of different things that play in there between you know the way that you the way that your muscles are engaged or not engaged, the way that certain things are stabilizing, the way that the actual path the technique is going. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot that we are unpacking here with just this one question, yeah. but it's essentially a matter of knowing technique, having someone else talk, like teaching you or, or at some point investing in that with you. If you find a good coach teacher that's able everything. to coach you and, yep. and to, to teach you how that technique should be done, doing research on that technique and, and the long-term effects of doing a certain technique. Yeah. Um, and then also having a critical eye and being able to watch that video of that JK instructor and be like, you know what? This, this, and this are good, but actually this thing is a little bit amiss. And, and it's okay and it's okay right. for you to look at high level instructors and be able to say that. Not because you're a pompous jerk, but if you look if objectively. If you have a trained eye, you should be able to see it. And yeah. that's part of your training. Yeah. If you have it if you're able to look objectively and not judge his character off of it, you just judge his karate and be like, okay, well, these things are good and this thing is a little bit off in my opinion. But yeah. you should be able to do that and defend that against people of other styles. Training your eye is no different than training a technique. You have to have it at a high level. If you can't see what's going wrong or what other people are doing incorrectly or correctly, you're not going to progress. Yeah. You have to see it. You have to be aware of what's going on. Mm -hmm. So just a side note. And that's another side note. We will rabbit trail all the time. Just forgive us and follow along. And by we, Jeremiah means him. No. <laughs> no, Lauren just went on a, a heck of a rabbit trail. And she brought it back together at the end, but it was one heck of a run trail. Look, it was it was a journey. It was a journey. <laughs> it was yes. a trail. Yes. Okay, well, hopefully that answers the question. Do you have anything to add to that? Uh, what were you working on this week? Um, worked on Boss Eye Show. Nice. Um, worked on that application that we uh, we actually mentioned it in last week's podcast. Um, some of it was okay. Some of it didn't work out that great. And then I just today worked through the actual kata. Um. <clears throat> what are you working on? I'm working on the left-right thing, Ricotta still. And I feel like I might have made another inquiry to my side snap kick. Another improvement? No. Nah, inquiry. Like, I think there might be something better about this, but I don't <laughs> quite know yet. And, I have more questions now. Right. I have more questions about it. And I'm getting – side snap kick has been a long, lifelong battle. Mm -hmm. It is hard for me to do, yeah. and I'm trying to get better at it. And I feel like I have a breakthrough, but I won't know until I ask my teacher yeah. and to make sure that it's correct because breakthroughs are not always correct. They could lead you down the wrong path. Yes, they could be breaking through a manhole and falling into the sewer. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect. Right? I'm going to use that with my with my students. That was a pretty good uh, analogy there. No, don't do that. Is that called an, no, is that don't an do analogy? It. It's not an analogy. Don't do it. Like don't a metaphor. Do it. Don't do it. You'll ruin them for life. That was perfect. Okay. Oh. Well, um, I think I have a fever, so we're going to be done here. Yeah, and I think I'm coming down with one. <laughs> it's December in Florida, and the weather doesn't really know what it's doing yet. Anyway, so you can uh, find us on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Lauren Hart, Jeremiah Hart on Facebook. Thank you for all your nice comments and suggestions. We really do appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, you're well. I mean, you're welcome to comment and ask questions on whatever below, and we're gonna try to get to all of them as, as often as we can. Um, you know, because we want this to be relevant. So, yep. All right. Have a great rest of your day. Bye. Bye.